He's moving. He's going. There he goes. Perfect. 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 All right, guys. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, man. Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Ben Zeno of the Wild Report. And I'm Zachary Gray. And today, we're going to be looking for two different species of snakes. I'll be searching for a cottonmouth, and I'm going to be looking for a couple different water snakes. So we have about an hour to look. We're hopefully going to get both these species, bring them together, and show you the differences between them. Yep, Let's see you. Alright, so right now what I'm doing, Ben's out looking for a water moccasin. I'm looking for a water snake. Got a good little edge here, might be able to follow it and uh, find some water snakes. I know there's a few different kinds that live here, so I'd really love to find one here. A few moments later. All right, we got a diamond back. Come here. Oh, jeez. Jeez, almost missed him. Almost missed him. Come here. Come here. All right, that's a diamond back water snake right there. Okay, no biting me. This is a non-venomous species. This is one of the few that I wanted to find for this video. And they've got this interesting banding. Looks very similar to a water moccasin. And look at his head. See how he's widening out his jaws right now? He's trying to look like a water moccasin. He's got a little bit of mud on him. Whoop. He almost bit me right there. Then this is not a full grown one. I've filmed some pretty massive ones in the past, but uh, this is about a medium size. So this is average size, I'd say. One of their favorite things to eat is catfish and bullfrogs. And I'd say that's what he's getting out here. But uh, pretty cool snake to find. Hopefully we'll find some others to show with the moccasin that hopefully Ben will find. Moccasins are pretty common out here. So uh, I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to find one. But uh, yeah, this is one of the first pieces to uh, film in both of them next to each other. All right, so Zach has gone to look for non venomous water snakes. I'm gonna take cottonmouth. So what we're doing, I'm just patrolling uh, this. There's this edge habitat kind of beside two canals that I'm looking for cottonmouths in. And they should, since it's kind of midday, they won't be very active. They'll probably be out basking. We got a spider web there. Woo. They should be out basking by these canals. Uh, hopefully they'll be somewhat lethargic and we can catch them pretty quickly. Um, they're supposed to be coming out here and we're gonna meet back up with Zach in about an hour and hopefully we'll each have something and we can show you the differences between those non-venomous water snakes and the venomous cottonmouth, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I think I just saw a tail going right here. Yep, it's a yellow belly. It's a yellow belly water snake. Come here, bud. All right, well this is another water snake that we have out here in Honey Island Swamp. This is a yellow belly water snake, oftentimes called a plain belly, but up north they also get what's called a red belly water snake. And really, I understand why they call it a plain belly, because it's just got a solid colored belly no matter where it lives. Now this one would be easy to confuse with like a dark, dark colored moccasin, but they're much, much thinner, and uh, he's widening his head to make himself look a little bit worse. Hey bud. How you doing? I can't hold him by the tail because he will spin and break his tail off and the tails can't regrow. Really good snake. This one's a bump smaller than that diamondback we caught. So, uh, you know, it'll be good to show them next to each other, but they're both medium sized snakes. Yellow bellies don't get nearly as big as diamondbacks. And uh, so that's a pretty good representation of their size. It's got a reddish black tongue and they've got these circle eyes. They've got the oval shaped eyes, whereas a cotton mouth would have those little vertical pupils. Now I can instantly tell you that this was a yellow belly based on the coloration and how fast it was. This guy took off really fast and he only tried to strike me once so uh, he's pretty chill right now but he is definitely trying to get away from me so uh, I've already got the diamond back and a yellow belly so I think I'll be, be able to go see what Ben's up to and see if he's caught a, a water moccasin yet. Welp, as it turns out, Zach got his targets just in time to meet up with me and film the capture of the final species that we needed to make this video, the cottonmouth snake. Yep. Alright guys, we have our target species right here, chilling on this log. And he could take off, and he could disappear pretty quickly, so we're going to have to do some good maneuvers to get him out. Oh, he's moving. He's going. He's going. He's going. As soon as he saw me, the moccasin dove into the water and crawled deep within a hollow log. To capture him successfully, I had only one option. Take the log. Yep. Dude, watch it. He'll come flying out. He's crawled up. Yeah. Just 
Just be careful. Okay. So, sometimes when we catch snakes, we make exceptions to rules. <laughs> Rule one. I just, you can put them right here. Put it right here. Don't touch venomous snakes or anything in them with your hands. Rule one is exit for today. Check it out. That is the cottonmouth snake. One of the most famous venomous snakes in the Houston U.S. Perfect place to get them. Now let's just boop him a little bit, get him to move. We'll coax him out on his own time. We'll let him do the moving. And we'll just work with him here. There he goes, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, guys. Oh, hey, buddy. Hey, hey, man. Okay, okay, okay. Now, oftentimes when we first get snakes out, they're gonna be a little bit scared, obviously. You're a big animal to them. They don't know if you're a threat, but you'll see actually, he has this really weird twitchy motion on land, right? Well, that's because these cotton mouths obviously are very, very water uh, specific. So you almost always see them in or right alongside water. There are exceptions to that rule, but he can't move very well on land. And this is just a perfect example of a cotton mouth. This is probably the most classic cotton mouth I've ever seen. He's just about average size for an adult. You see maybe two feet long, that nice thick viper body, that dark chocolate coloration on the back, and that will even get darker as he gets older. And then very, if you look very closely, you'll see that Hershey's kiss shaped uh, markings on the side. But With a venomous cottonmouth and two commonly confused lookalike species captured, it was finally time to bring them all together and show you the key differences between these species. Let's, let's get people educated. First land, these look pretty similar to that guy. Goodness, they're shockingly similar. I have to double take the most with diamondbacks because they have a very similar banding. The head is completely different though. The moccasins normally have a banding on the head. And oftentimes I have to double take with yellow bellies too because we've caught solid black water moccasins. And if you look at the top of the yellow belly, it has a solid black coloration, and if you get these two guys upset, they'll try to widen their head to look like a moccasin. But of course, when you look at a moccasin, uh, hopefully we'll get some shots where you can see that. But uh, they, they've just got this giant head compared to normal water snakes, which is pretty crazy. So I think the biggest thing that we can use to identify them, the coloration can vary pretty widely against you know different regions and different individuals, but the pattern is gonna be different, and what we can show them that diamondback on the side, it looks nothing like a Hershey's Kiss. He has a very distinctive stripe pattern. And while it does make diamonds in the middle, it, they don't even resemble Hershey's Kisses. The easiest thing for me, cotton mouths are so fat. Like this snake probably weighs as much as this diamondback, even though this diamondback is much longer. But he's just so fat. And the only snake I can think of, the only two snakes I can think of that'll be like that fat would be a hog nose or a rattlesnake because they just have this completely different body type than water snakes. Come here. Now you, ah! this, <laughs> you see the behavioral differences as well. Uh, pit vipers are very low energy serpents. They're, they're basically, he's just going to sit on the, the stream bank. Yeah. He's, they're very chonk. Right. He's, a, he's an ambush predator. He'll expend as little energy as possible. Whereas with some of the non-venomous Nerodi, I feel like you see them swimming a lot. You see them kind of searching out prey. I would say what 99% of the time you see cottonmouth is going to be sitting just like this somewhere near water. One thing to note though is that even though this species happens to use venom to acquire its prey and these are non-venomous, they all still fulfill that ecological role. So yeah. they, um, they help transfer nutrients between these aquatic and terrestrial ecosystems out here. You know, they can go in the water, prey on fish, come back out on land, feed a heron. Uh, so they're really essential for that role. And there's very few other things. I mean, maybe a big bullfrog is a similar ecological niche, I would say. And another thing, I mean, look, we're, you know, a foot from a water moccasin, and he's not, like, chasing us. Or, and some people have that in their they, brain. They, so one thing about moccasins that I've noticed, uh, a bunch of people, it's the whole thing, oh, I got chased by a moccasin. They're very defensive snakes. So what that means is if you mess with them, be ready to feel the wrath of the open mouth, you know, and they'll even come towards you. Like, if you mess with them a bunch, they'll come towards you with their mouth open. Uh, they were, when Ben was filming some close-ups of him, he came towards, like, he was coming at him with his mouth open. That's not him chasing him. That's him saying, hey, back off. I want to just go back in the water. And that's what they do. They're very defensive. Whereas these guys are much more timid. They try to take off, and once you grab them, they'll definitely try to bite you. Every snake, well, I don't say every snake, um, 
Most snakes, when you try to grab them, their first thing is that they're going to try to bite you and they're going to try to musk on you. Cottonmouths are no different. They're just much more defensive when you mess with them rather than water snakes that just try to get away. So to sum things up, the three key ways to tell cottonmouths from non-venomous snakes are body shape, behavior, and body markings. When looking at these animals side by side, it is quite noticeable that the cottonmouth is significantly stockier in build, and in the wild is often found coiled up as it basks or ambushes prey. From a behavioral standpoint, cottonmouths are likely to stand their ground and flash the white interior of their mouths when they feel threatened, while water snakes will flee whenever possible. Finally, many cottonmouths have a visible Hershey's Kiss pattern on their side, which is almost identical to the pattern of their cousin the copperhead, although it should be noted that some individuals will darken with age until it is hard to spot this feature. Alright guys, this has been such a cool experience getting all three of these species on a camera for you. I really hope that you learned how to tell the difference between the cottonmouth and some of these non venomous water snakes. Hopefully the next time you just assume it's a cottonmouth, you will maybe won't kill it. And also, now you can figure out which ones could possibly be of harm to you. Now before you leave, make sure you go over to Zach's channel. He has some really awesome videos with all kinds of Louisiana wildlife up yeah. there. Oh yeah, he has diamondback water snakes cottonmouths, all kinds of stuff. So if you're interested in learning more about wildlife, definitely go check his channel out, and we'll get these beautiful snakes right back where they belong. All right, cool. All right, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the yellow belly in the water. We didn't find it by the water, but this is pretty close to where we found him, so. Diamondback first. Whoosh, that sucker is gone. And then the yellow belly, they should leave each other alone and uh, find a good place to chill. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, now as you can see, I'm standing just right beside this cotton mouth, and it's not coming after me. He's completely free, and you can tell the only thing he wants to do is get back into his little habitat. He'll probably bask, we go hunt for some frogs or something, but completely unaggressive snake, not coming towards me, does not care at all about me, just wants to go back and go about his business. That was such an awesome animal encounter. You can really see that all they want is to stay in their habitat, so just remember, you respect their space, and they'll respect yours. Well everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed, and learned some good tips about telling the difference between cottonmouths and water snakes. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video, and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.